Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at another native Microsoft Teams room system, the Crestron Flex B160T. In this video, we want to do a few things. First, we want to review all the different components. On screen, you can see we've got the familiar 10.1 inch touchscreen, we've got a front of room soundbar system with camera, we're going to take a closer look at each of these. We're going to take a closer look at the UC engine, the main computing piece of the system as well and talk about how that can be mounted and where it can be stored. Then after we're done reviewing the various components of the system, we're gonna go ahead and do a demo of a Microsoft Teams meeting join, the OneTouch join experience, uh, take a look at sharing your screen through HDMI. And finally, we'll go over to Crestron's website and take a look at the cabling diagram that they provide you to show you how the cabling should be set up in an example in a room. Stick with me, let's take a look at the system. First on our list of components for the B160T is the 10.1 inch uh, display that is typically your, your center of room display. Uh, you'll typically see this sitting in the middle of a conference room table in your conference room. Uh, but I've also seen some pictures online of different Crestron customers that have gotten creative. They've mounted this on the wall right as you come into the room. It's, it's right there by the light switches and other room controls. Uh, also seen this mounted at the front of the room uh, beside the sound bar and the display itself. So a couple options for where the, uh, the actual uh, controls for the system go. But typically you see this sitting, uh, it's got a, a, uh, you know, a stand back here to sit on and you typically just have this sitting right in the middle of your table in a conference room. Now the interface itself, as you can see, this is uh, the standard Microsoft Teams interface that we have for our other uh, Microsoft Teams room systems. You've got your new meeting option, your present option. Oh, let's go ahead and cancel that. And then we've got the invite this room option. Uh, we've got our time up at the uh, upper right hand corner as well as the account that we're signed in with. We created a test account here, the Crestron B160 account. We can control our volume, slide that up or down. And we've got a menu item here for going into our settings, restarting the device and accessibility. If we go to the settings, we go ahead and tap in the password there. We'll bring this a little bit closer just so we can kind of see some of the, uh, the settings available. We have the user account tab, which has our sign in info all along the left hand side here. We've got uh, the exchange info, which will be updated as you're typing in the sign-in info. The supported meeting type. This can either be Skype for Business and Microsoft Teams as the default, which is what we have selected, or you can have Skype for Business be your default, but also allow Microsoft Teams meetings as well, or you can turn this to a Skype for Business only meeting. We'll go ahead and keep what we have set there. Bluetooth beaconing, we've got that turned on, allowing you to do the proximity join capabilities of these rooms and then your configured domains. You can either save and exit or exit without saving at the bottom. Let's go on over to our features tab. The features tab gives us a few different things here. Auto screen sharing. So if we plug in our laptop with the HDMI cable, do we automatically share out that desktop without having to do anything else? We have that turned on. Um, hide meeting names. Do we wanna hide the meeting titles on the room calendar? Uh, dual monitor mode. So we have this current setup with one monitor, a 32 inch uh, monitor sitting behind the system. You can have this set up with two monitors, giving you a little more control over content on one screen, video boxes on the other, etc. And then you can choose which microphone and speaker and, and to use for, uh, for the system. We're gonna leave this set to all the defaults. That's really what we want to be there. Um, and then of course, sending logs back with feedback, your save options. You can change the theme over here. We'll just leave the themes the way it is. And then for the Windows settings, you can say, go to admin sign in. You have to sign in with the admin account, uh, all that good stuff. You can actually manage the device from the uh, Windows operating system. We're not gonna do any of that. So we'll just say exit without saving. And we go back to our main screen. 
from the home screen of the MTR, and we're talking about any MTR in general at this stage, you have your gear icons button down in the bottom right hand corner, and then there is a little controls button next to that. What is beyond that controls button varies by vendor. In the case of Crestron, they have built in some controls, as we see on this screen here, to control the lighting and window shades within the room. These are optional. Obviously, the components to do this are dependent upon the lighting and window shades being connected in the room, as well as purchasing the proper components from Crestron to be able to manage these devices uh, and, and these aspects of your room from the MTR screen. But it is an option that you can look into if you would like to bake in control of the entire room into the MTR beyond just your meeting. And there you have it, that is the center of room 10.1 inch touchscreen display. Okay, now we have the actual sound bar. Now this is the front of room sound bar. If we take a look at the length of it, it is quite a lengthy sound bar. There's a whole lot of speaker and mic built into this thing, uh, giving you a, a pretty good audio experience there, ensuring you catch a lot of the audio from around the room. Then you've got the camera built right into the front here. Now, the camera that comes with these devices is a Hudley camera. And this, as we'll see in a minute, when you actually open the back of this device up, you can see that that camera is just sitting in a bracket in there that it can be swapped out if you have a different type of camera that you want to swap out. Um, there, there's a very simple connection point back there. So you really just unplug the Hudley that's in there Put your other camera in, I'll bring it right up to the front, right there, and then you can uh, plug it in and, and have a whole different camera set up. Again, this is assuming you have a different type of camera that you wanted to be in there instead of the Hudley that comes with it. Uh, let's go ahead and flip this thing um, back up and we'll show you what it's like for this device to be mounted on a wall and opened up for cable management. The view we have right now is we are looking down at the top of the table, and this is the back of the sound bar for the B160T. Um, the sound bar goes obviously a bit wider, but the piece we are looking at here, this is the metal piece, the bracket that actually gets mounted to the wall. You've got eight different spots here to have your screws and bolts and anchors and all that stuff coming through to keep this nice and secure on a wall. And this actually opens up this way. There are hinges at the back side, the bottom back here, and then some very powerful magnets up in these corners that keep the thing closed and together. Um, when this device is up on a wall, it makes it, it's a little easier to just tilt it forward and open it up. Uh, right now, we gotta actually put a decent amount of muscle into opening this black, uh, the back metal uh, frame from the rest of the device. So when we do that, give a little muscle there, it pops open, and you'll hear how strong those magnets are in a moment when I close it, it snaps pretty, pretty, uh, pretty loudly. Looking in here, we can see that Hudley camera that I'd mentioned earlier is sitting right inside this little cradle. Uh, so good stuff. The, uh, it's plugged into the soundbar itself via this cable, this USB connection. So you can see you would just unplug the USB connection, take the camera out and swap it out for whatever you do want in there. Then we've got the uh, cable that goes to USB on the UC engine right here. And then we've got the power cable below that over here. You have a little bit of space to kind of wrap your cords up and tuck them in here neatly. And then presumably those cords would be going into the wall uh, through this slot in the back. That way, as this camera, as the, the camera and sound bar is mounted at the front of the room, you don't see any cables at all. Now let's go ahead and close this, listen for that snap. And there you have it. It is a quite a snap, very powerful magnets. Make sure that this thing stays upright when it needs to, but it can be opened up for your easy access when you need to get to the wires and cabling. Okay, we are looking at the UC engine. This is the actual compute piece of the room system. Now, I, I realize that I don't quite have all my cables tucked away as neatly as you would in a actual room, so keep that in mind. I've got things set up here for uh, simplicity, for comfort, for, for getting a quick demo set up and ready to roll. Uh, but ideally, you would take this whole panel and have it mounted wherever makes the most sense for your room, whether that's under a table, behind some wall, 
wherever it made sense, you can mount that whole plate and have all the compute uh, out of the way, out of sight, and have the cables and, and wires running where they need to. Now you'll notice over to the side, we have a device here that is not attached to the entire UC engine piece. This is a power over ethernet switch from Crestron. Um, the way that is being used in this case, we have it powered up. We have our main ethernet cable, the gray cable coming into the switch itself to give us access to the network. But then we have two ethernet cables plugged in up top. One of them is coming from the 10.1 uh, inch touchscreen display, the center of room display that powers it on and puts it on the network. The other network cable is going into our UC engine itself. Now you'll notice that with both of those devices plugged in, they're on the same network. That's actually how they talk at this time. The 10.1 inch display and the PC engine itself are not directly connected. They are connected via the network. So they know each other's IP that can be configured. Um, and that is how this currently works. We do have it on good authority that a direct connect option is being introduced probably before the end of this year, uh, before the end of the calendar 2019. So keep that in mind. Eventually the display itself in the center of room will be able to be plugged directly into the UC engine. And then presumably at that point, you would just have the UC engine plugged into the network. Moving on, let's talk about what we're looking at on the UC engine. At the very back, we've got our power. Okay, the power cable is uh, coming in right there. As we follow that around, that power cable is all wrapped up and it comes right around to this portion right here. If we flip that up, that is our power coming in at the very edge. We've got the network cable that I mentioned here coming into the PC piece itself. We've got a dongle for the Logitech keyboard. We have the USB coming in for the soundbar itself. And then we've got our HDMI for the display in the room coming into the device. This other port is used for that second display should you need it. When not using it, there is this handy little golden dongle plugged in that keeps everything displaying the way that it needs to in between the, uh, the, the center of room 10.1 inch touch display and whatever display you're plugging into. Uh, on the back side, We've got a USB plug plugged in there. That USB is coming around to that converter. The converter is uh, converting HDMI into USB, tying back into the system. The HDMI cable with a little Crestron logo over there comes around and is actually a cable that can be plugged into your laptop so that you uh, are able to walk into the room, plug HDMI to your laptop, and boom, you're sharing your desktop to the meeting room. Before we get into the demos, let's talk a little bit more about the cabling and setup of the device itself. Looking at this product page out at Crestron's website, we have all the general stuff you'd expect from a product page. You've got the overview, specifications, models and accessories, and documentation. We scroll on down to technical resources and we have this handy application diagram here. If you click on download, you get this page. Now the reason I wanted to show you this page is because this brings a whole lot of simplicity to what needs to connect where. This is just a theoretical setup, not at all a literal, you must put these places in these spots within your room setup, but it lets us know which wires need to go where. In this theoretical setup, we are looking at a dual display uh, configuration. We have two devices mounted to the front of the room each of them connects via HDMI back to the UC engine, wherever that happens to be in the room. The camera and sound bar, again, front of room device mounted at the front of the room, connects directly into that UC engine over USB 3.0. Then on board that metal frame we saw, the converter for HDMI to USB connects back to the UC engine over the USB. Then from there, that HDMI cable runs all the way out to your conference table so that when you walk into the room, you can grab that HDMI connection, plug it into your laptop and start sharing your desktop to the meeting. Finally, we have that center of room touch display, the 10.1 inch display that like we mentioned, typically sits on that conference table in the middle of the room. This is connected to your network over ethernet as is the UC engine. 
That is how the two devices talk to each other. It is a network-based communication. In the future, before the end of this calendar year, Crestron does plan to have a direct connect method. That means that instead of having to talk to each other over the, uh, over the network, making sure your IPs are correct, etc., you can plug a cable directly from the 10.1 inch touch display into the UC engine itself, and then the UC engine will be the only device that plugs into the network for internet connectivity. And that's it. This diagram really helps simplify what the setup needs to look like in the room using all the components that are included. Okay, moving into the demo portion of the video, let's talk about joining a meeting, what that experience looks like. Before we actually join the meeting, I just want to pull the, uh, the center of room display up a little bit closer to the camera. As you can see, we have a slightly different screen here. I got some real glare happening with the lights overhead, but I created a meeting. We have this, there it is, Crestron test meeting. Uh, it is set up uh, with me right there. There is a join button. The glare is terrible. There it is, join. Crestron test meeting, join. So we're gonna walk into the room, walk up to this device, click join, and be right into the meeting. And we'll turn on video and all that good stuff. And then afterwards, we will connect our uh, device, our laptop, to the meeting via HDMI and show what that experience is like. Okay, we're ready to do this demo. As you'll notice, I have gotten a little creative with, uh, with the, the uh, sound bar here. Since we don't actually have the sound bar mounted to the front of a room so that it's at that right level for camera, uh, I have tilted it up with a placemat so that we are now looking more toward our face and less toward the knees. Uh, we've got the sound bar propped up. We're gonna go ahead and click the join button on our center of room touch display. Join, and just like that, we're in the meeting. And... Now I have muted it uh, because I am already joined to the meeting at the back of the room. We had some crazy feedback happening really quick there. So I've muted from this side. You can see we're muted because the light on the sound bar has gone red. Um, and we still have our camera on. You can see down the small corner there where I still have video happening. So we're in the meeting now. We can add participants. We have at the very bottom here, a number of controls. We can control our audio, uh, mute our audio if we want to, turn video off, um, mute, unmute. And, uh, and then again, adding participants there. And then also, of course, we can hang up and leave the meeting. Before we leave the meeting, let's go ahead and share our desktop. Got my laptop sitting here. So I walk into the room and I've got this handy little HDMI cable sitting right in the center of the room. And as soon as I plug it in, we have desktop sharing happening immediately. Uh, the important thing to remember here is there was a setting that we reviewed that actually gave you the option to not automatically share your desktop once you were connected. We left that enabled so that as soon as we connect the cable, boom, we're sharing our desktop into the meeting. And that was the product overview and demo of joining a meeting and sharing your desktop with the Crestron Flex UC B160T. I hope you found the overview and demo helpful. If you did, as always, please retweet, reshare, spread it around social media, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching. I hope we'll see you on the next Microsoft Teams device video overview.